What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? It's the host who does it the most, Lit Like 96. And uh, as you can tell, I got a new cosplay. Say hello to Agent Prowler, aka Miles James Morales, a new Spider OC that I've come up with. And you'll see more videos with him at a later date and time. But until then, the host who does it the most is back at it again with another episode of Reddit Reactions. And in today's story, this story is actually going to be coming from a married ma man. And let me tell you something. Thing. This story is quite the doozy. So, um, let's dive into this one, shall we? Am I wrong for being upset with my wife after another man flirted with her? Oh, shit. Buckle the hell in for this one. My spouse, 46 female, and I, 52 male, were attending an out-of-state graduation ceremony for our nephew to celebrate. We organized a large gathering at a rented house. House, our nephew's dad, referred to as Bill, was also present at the event. At one po point, me, at, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. At one point, while I was indoors, someone approached me and informed me that, that there was a situation involving Bill and my wife. I went outside to find Bill and my wa wife seated on the ca couch, engrossed in his phone and sharing laughter. I noticed him playfully touching her leg as they continued looking on the ph phone. On two subsequent occasions, I observed her sitting next to him him again. Later, my wife confided in me that she was aware of Bill's attempts at flirting with her, her but as she, he was assured, but she assured me that she had no interest in pursuing anything with him. She admitted that he had touched her leg again and invited her, her to sit beside him while I reassured her, her that she wasn't at fault for his advances. I couldn't help but wish she had distanced herself and chosen not, not to sit beside him once more. Am I my wrong being upset. Hold on real quick. Dude. No. Like, okay, so there's a lot of shit that's wrong with this. Let's let's start with this. Let's start with this. I'm assuming that this is... I'm assuming that this is your brother, a.k.a. her brother-in-law. Because if this is the wife's brother, this shit's already weird. Like, the shit's already going to be weird from that point, folks. Because, number one, one, so there's a lot of issues that I've been noticing within the current course of 2023. And this this story right here just summarizes it. Why is it that a lot of women who rush into relationships or talk about how eager they are to get married or get in a relationship with a man? Why I got to ask, ladies, why do y'all do a 180 on your boundaries? Now, what do I mean when I say that? What do I mean when I say that? Like, you'll do a 180 on on it. Like, you'll instantly start being stingy and all, all that shit with your husband man, when it comes to physical touch. But as soon as you go to a function, every Tom, Dick, and Harry can go ahead and cop a feel all over while you're in a relationship. And keep in mind, before anyone tries to jump my shit on this, keep in mind, this is just strictly my opinion, opinion on this and everything. However, I will say this and this alone. Notice how this was such an issue that other members of this man's family were com coming up to saw this and literally went to this woman's husband, a.k.a. the OP, and sat there and said, hey, you need to come out here and see what your wife is over here doing. But most importantly, this is the biggest issue. You, you Stop engaging in this shit while you're married. You got a man at home. This is some nightclub shit. This is some nightclub shit. Yeah, the husband's not fucking wrong. Now, here's what I think he needs to do. He needs to lay down the law with that shit. He needs to make sure that shit never happens again. But most importantly, it's not just with his wife he needs to lay the law down. He needs to lay the law down with his fucking brother. Basic, or like his nephew's father, a.k.a. his brother. Again, I'm assuming that this is the husband's brother. Because if this is the wife's brother, then I, and trust me, I've read a couple Reddit stories where it's gone that route, folks. It's not exactly a pretty thing. But if this is the wife's brother, that's just even more of a red flag. Like, what you call it? Highest recommendation, in my opinion, hubby needs to actually go out of his way and straight up just... He needs to just... So here's what he needs to do. He needs to call up his brother, but do it in front of his wife. And he needs to watch her actions, okay? He needs to watch her actions. And the reason I say that is because if she gets mad and defends said behavior, then that's where you go in for the divorce. 
because that basically signifies that she's cheating on him. Because what woman does that? Who's letting a man just like touch up on your fucking thigh and she is like you don't have a husband? I don't know. I don't know, man. Like a lot of, lot of these shit pigs nowadays are out here doing all this scandalous shit. And it's just kind of wilding. All right, ladies and gents, I'm feeling generous this episode. So why don't we do, do a second one in this little bout? Because this was the one I initially wanted to do for this episode, but the other one got my attention today. And I figured, what the hell? Because this one is actually hot and trending all over TikTok. And it actually does come with an update. So I'm going to give you the whole, whole story. <clears throat> this story goes a little something like this. My wife told me someone else is her soulmate. My wife, M, met her best friend, Chuck, in high school. They became close friends, and Chuck came out to M as gay. M was supportive. A year or so late, later, Chuck came out to his parents. They disowned him and kicked him out. Chuck ended up living with M and her parents for the rest of high school. M and I started dating after college. She told me all about Chuck and how close they were and how he was like a brother. brother. I met Chuck, and we got along and became great friends. Friends. Chuck is a good guy, and at the time he was dating a gu guy, they ended up moving in to get together and was about the, about the same time that Em and I got engaged. Em and I have been married for five years now. I'm a project manager and took on a year-long project in another c city. I have at least I have to leave 5.30 at the, in the mor morning every day to get home around 6.30 p.m. Em and I had a long talk about my job before, or, or I would be working so m much. But I'm getting more money than I ever thought I would. After this project, we can pay, pay off our student debt and start trying to have a baby. And start trying to have a baby. Maybe we both agreed to the mo money was worth it. It's, it's only a year. That year will be up in late November. In March, Chuck cut his boyfriend cheating, cheating on him. He was devastated. M immediately told him he could mo move in with us. I was fine with him moving in, but not happy that M, M didn't discuss it with me first. Chuck was pretty broken up. Um, and M was giving him lots of love and attention. I was fine with it because as I know how much she loves Chuck, Chuck and he did need her. her. I also did my best to support him, him and make him feel lo loved. For a while, this was fi fine, but as time went on, M has continued to pour all of her attention into Chuck. Sometimes I get ho home from work and neither of them are th there. I found out they went to a movie or out to dinner together. I don't th think there is anything romantic or sexual between them, but it has been no knowing that I get left out of the plans. The past few weeks, several th things have happened. The three of us went to a par party and someone joked about, about how Chuck is be being our third wheel. And M said, Chuck is not, not the third wheel. I said, what? what? And she said, I've known Chuck longer than I've known you. A week, week or so after that, M and Chuck went out dancing one night. I had to work the next day, so I stayed home. I woke up at about 3 a.m. And, and M was not in bed. I went and found her and Chuck cuddled up on the couch asleep, asleep with the TV. TV on. Both, both have been working so much. Both of those things made me uncomfortable. I also realized I had been working so much that I was just sort of letting M and Chuck plan everything. I had not planned a date night in a while. I decided I needed to be more, more active, so I planned a date night for last Friday. And when I first told M, she was excited as we have not been on a date, date, just the two of us in a while. Friday, I got home at 6.30 and M and Chuck were not Hot right there. I took a shower and got re ready. About seven fifteen, I finally called him as she was as she was. Ah, God, as we had reservations at eight. Sorry, but uh, I'm over here trying to speed read. She an answered, and when I asked where she w was, she said, "Had her and Chuck had gone shopping and were go getting some di dinner." I was kind of stunned and asked about our date. She laughed and said, "Had oh, I forgot. Got oh well. That was th that. She didn't even invite me to join them." So, a point I should make here, my dad was very controlling of my mom and had an anger pro problem where he would yell and throw things. He never threw things at us, but it was still scary as a kid. Kid, I've wor worked very hard to not be like him. him. I've tried, tried to never be controlling of him or tell, tell her what to do. Ooh. I also tend to shut down when I get angry. When M forgot our date, hey, I was mad, so I didn't say anything right th then, but I knew I needed to address how I was feeling. So, later that evening, I told her her we needed to talk. I had written down some things so I could stay fo focused. I started by say saying that I loved Chuck and he 
He was always welcome in our home, but that and I felt like our marriage was suffering and we needed to work on us. And blew up. She thought I was attacking Chuck. I guess I didn't word things well. She said, and she started defending him and attacking me. We have never ever had a big fight before. Or we always talk and work things out. I was stunned that she was attacking me. She said had some awful th things. Then she said, Chuck is my soulmate and you just have to get used to that. that. Okay, hold on. Before I continue reading this, damn, bitch, you really ain't thinking about this. This is your husband you're saying this to with your chest. You're like, just... Half of the shit I'm reading so far, far no, like, like, this is the shit I'm talking about. Ladies, your boundaries doing a 180. You're in a relationship. Fucking act like it, damn. The disrespectful is, the shit is just real. I just shut down. I didn't even know, know how to process that. I love him more than anything in the world, but in that mo moment, I realized she loves Chuck more than she loves me. me. I thought Em and I were so mates, but to hear her say hey, she considers someone else her soulmate has been devastating. Yeah, no, I'm going to tell you that that right now. Now, if I end up married or dating somebody, if she talks about how another man is her fucking soulmate, mate, the bills are stopping. You're going to be single again. Just like, oh, that's so, oh, that's so toxic. Who hurt? No, no, like dead ass. Been married to this man for some years and you straight up just going to tell Tell him your gay best friend is your fucking soulmate. Grow the fuck up, up and act like you married. 30-something years old and your ass is over here, here treating your husband, talking about your husband's the third week. You know, the fuck wrong with y'all? I swear, some people just don't need to be mar married. Some people just don't need to be ma married because that ain't right. That's just blatant disrespect. I don't remember the rest of the talk. She huffed up off after a while and slept on the couch. Her and Chuck left together on Saturday and we were gone most and were gone most of the day. When they got back, she was acting like nothing ha happened. On Sunday, she even made a sm small joke and batted her eyes at me. Something she does when she he's flirting with me. Normally, I love it, but this time it just made me sick. I told her this was a busy week, week at work and I was just go going to stay at a hotel near the job site. Something I've done for a few a few times before. So I haven't b seen her, her since Sunday night. I don't know know what to do. Typing all of this up has made me realize I am really burnt, burnt out with all of this travel. Maybe I checked out too much and haven't given her enough attention, but how do I move forward knowing she will never love me as much as I love her? her. So, before I get into the update, I want to say that this. It's not the husband's fault in this scenario. He's like, this is the biggest problem I ha have that I've seen in a lot of like infidelity stories stories and off my chest subreddits and whatnot and it's usually always the husband's working non-stop nine to five shit so he can actually provide for you like like i've seen a lot of women just sit there and say oh he's got to make this amount of money and so on and so forth and all that well this is how he does it this is how they do it this is how men get shit done we go to work and do all these extra hours for you so you can live that lavish and comfortable lifestyle so I gotta, I gotta say, a lot of people, a lot of people just instantly think some, someone just Thanos snaps the fucking money into their bank accounts. It's not how it works. It's not how it works. I guarantee you. I feel like a lot of chicks need to join the workforce and start real realizing. And you would think within this time frame, actually, scratch that. Let me rephrase that. You would think within this time frame, where a lot of women are in the workforce, they'd start realizing, okay, wow, money doesn't grow on fucking trees. Some, there, some people who are wealthy actually do work to get that shit way I see it. That's the way I see it. Just want to throw in a friendly reminder that this is just my opinion. Okay, let me just... There we go. Now, ladies and gents, let us get to the update. So the update happened six day days after the original post, okay? Keep in mind, this is about like two and a half weeks ago, so I just want to keep that in mind. I've been busy with work, so that's why I never got to do this as soon as it popped off. I made my first post on Thursday when I took took the time to think, think about it all and type it all out. I realized how burnt out I, I have been with this work project. Friday morning, I met with my team and scheduled some time off coming up soon. I'm in the month 
much better head headspace and just knowing that I have downtime soon. Em and I had our fight on Friday night. Then I left on mo Monday and stayed out of town all week, week for my project. During that time, we did text back and forth every day. We talked on the phone a few times. It was awkward because we both knew we needed to have a big talk over the phone. And over the phone, phone was not, not the time nor the place. Em texted me this Friday and said Chuck was gone on for the weekend so we could spend time, just the two of us, and she wanted to make up for our missed date. I got home Friday evening and we agreed to talk do, doing, before doing anything else. I had written out everything I wanted to say. Hey, and she sat and listened. Listen, we talked for a long time. We each went back and forth or, or, or to some th things to get clarification. So I'm not going to try and replay everything we said. said. Just the main part that we did make the most sense i want to point out i love how after she said this shit she now wants to backtrack i'll say this much because i've i've seen this kind of thing a couple times as before i like i i've seen this kind of happening a couple, couple times before i've had a few female friends in my college years and they actually had like gay best friends that were pretending like you know be their pretend boyfriends whenever they went out and shit like that that but most importantly when they actually did get into relationships they did kind of pull this shiz and uh i gotta be honest they they had no qualms calling that shit shit into like fruition like okay what the hell is you doing calling me when you got got your man at home like you do realize i'm still a dude right these dudes had no problem voicing this shit is i can say that much but most importantly she's of course she's gonna try and call you back, back and try to fix the things because what you call it if it because she knows she fucked up it's an emotional affair and the only reason why it hasn't gone physical is because because he's supposedly gay i'm so sorry but it's like i'm sorry but it's like when as soon as you found him like cuddling up on the couch and all that shit she is, dude, like a lot of dudes pretend to be gay to get up in a girl's drawers. And women know this shit. So let's not even pretend that, that BS. But I mean, hey, I told her how I didn't like her joke about me being the third wheel and how much it hurt and that she forgot our date, date and then how she cr and then how crushed I was to, and that she said that Chuck was her soulmate. There were some other little things too. too. When I was done, she said that she was sorry and she was wrong for saying those th things. She said I am not, not the third wheel. Well, and, that, and I am her soulmate. She asked if she could explain why she did and said what she did. Now, I'll say this much. I wouldn't hear this conversation because it just seems like it's scripted. It seems like it's scripted because I've it, I've seen in most relationships that women don't understand the concept that men are just that men that a woman's words can hurt a man and his entire soul and shit like that a lot of like you'd be surprised a lot of women don't understand that concept and i can be honest with you when i say this ladies and gents a lot of chicks will just think oh i'll just say sorry and it'll be over and it's like no you already said it and you said it with the utmost confidence it's already been done the damage has been there you've sown the seeds of doubt and it's like he don't want to even most dudes will tap out a relationship ship it's like the toxic word words have already been said and it's like you can apologize you can try and offer everything under the sun but i don't know no, most dudes tend to check out the relationship and then just be ready to have it and start preparing their exit strategy. So I just want to point that one out. There are some instances and all that, but let's see how this story goes. When Chuck's parents first kicked him out, out of high school, he was in a bad pl place and they considered taking his life. He told Am and Am's mom and they got him out. So when Chuck called in, called in March about his boyfriend's cheating on, on him, Am had freaked out. Out and was afraid he was going to hurt himself. She said she felt like, like she had made a comment about how, how, how for the past six mo months it seems like her and Chuck were li living their best life together. And she said hey, that she was she has been miserable well, this whole time that she has been you know, on the verge of a nervous breakdown. Hold up, hold the fuck up, hold not. Nah. Hold the fuck up. Six months. This nigga been here for six months. Bitch, you've been do doing your husband dirty and just being... Dude, I'd have left. This conversation would not be happening. The closest thing the closest thing she'd have to a conversation is me going stove face, gray rock, rock, slapping some divorce papers on there, and a note that says, since you have your soulmate, I'm, I'm going to go find mine. And then putting my wedding ring on the coffee ta table. But six months, this is a whole 30-year-old woman. This is a whole 30-something-year-old wo woman who's been... Married to this man. And she been doing this shit for six months? What the fuck is wrong with, wrong with you? Baby girl, who hurt... Baby girl, who the fuck hurt you? 
who hurt you that badly to where you doing your husband dirty like that for six straight months over a dude that like other dudes i get he your best friend i get he i get he like a brother to you but but i'm pretty sure he looked at you and was like what the fuck is you doing After our fight, she knew she was wrong and realized she needed to get help and let it go. Go. She talked with Chuck and he promised that he was a stronger person than he was in high school. Well, and promised that he was not, not even thinking about hurting himself. Uh, they agreed that it was best if he moved up. Now, both to give M and I time to work on us and so M wouldn't be uh, uh, obsessing over when and he was uh, coming and go going. M wanted to talk to me last Sunday, day, but I had said I needed time and she wanted to give me space. Hey, it was a long talk, talk with lots of tears. She apologized a bunch of times. She said she was concerned with Chuck's mental health, health that she attacked me because she thought I was going to make him move out. out. He should move out. He's still a grown-ass man. He knows how to pay his fucking bi bills. And it was in March, six months later. I'm pretty sure he was over his, his last little boy to toy. Like, he's a grown fucking man still. He's a grown fucking man. You're not his mother. mother. Like, I'm sorry, but it's like, Especially like you're doing, you're hanging out and you're breaking your neck to do all this shit. Especially like the part where your husband set up a romantic date night and you just shrug that up, off like some college frat girl. Like, oh well, who cares? That like, no, that's that's the biggest toxic trait right there. That's like a red flag. Just all this. Oh my god, god! Like she can't tell this story to no other woman because every other woman's gonna be like, you're lucky he didn't divorce you. Most men would divorce you. I divorce you. You like that? I've seen a lot of women look at certain stories and be like, "Yeah, no, that's that's a fair assessment for a dude to leave leave a woman." Woman, this is one of those fair assessments. We were both emotionally drained after the talk, so we just ordered some food, food stayed in, we cuddled in bed, and watched TV, talk, talk, and just be together. We've missed each other a lot these past few months, and it was really nice just to hold, hold her. The next day, Saturday, we took a day date. Day we went to breakfast, went shopping, saw a movie, even got pedicures together. My toes look amazing. Amazing. Several times throughout the day, she wouldn't just stop and look, look at me and say, hey, she had missed me. me and was just, and she was so sorry she had pushed me away. Yeah, the way you pushed him, yeah, you pushed him away some time and a half ago. Go, six months is enough. It just, like, the definition of how toxic are you? Today, Sunday, we called Chuck, who was staying with another friend. He said he was sorry he had caught uh, so much stress for him and me. Me. Yeah, motherfucker. Yo, yeah, you were fucking straight up home record, dude. Who you knew this bitch was doing all this shit, and you didn't t try to tell her to stop. I love how he did. Like, I, I just want to point out. I just want to point out. It's good that she's being a really good friend slash surrogate sister there to the dude. I want to point that out. Okay, nothing wrong with that. However, homeboy's only apologetic after the shit hit the fan. Six months. You've been there for six months. Once the, like, dude, once she started skipping out on her husband's date night, and it's like, you know she talked about it. Like, you know she talked about it. Once she skipped out on her husband, on her hubby's date night that he pl planned, that was your cue to pack your shit and leave and stay with another friend, because that was your time to go. Like, you got a little too comfortable. Well, like, homeboy must have liked the drama or some shit. He acknowledged he had been focused on himself and not even realized that we, we were not doing well. He said he he loved us both and is so grateful that he let that we let him stay. Hey, while he was getting up over his breakup, he was he is looking at a few places and plans to be out next week, in the next week or two. He did offer to move out right away, but I am okay with him staying a little longer. I think having a, having a plan in pl place is the most important thing. Yeah, but in the same breath, homeboy been there for six months and he was borderline fucking up your marriage. I, I, like he could stay at the friend's house and do that shit. Let him fuck up somebody else's relationship. Yeah, or at the very least, let him stay with some people. People that'll tolerate him, and now that he got himself more put together, like, cause trust me, that won't stop your wife from doing that shit again. I don't know, no, cause like I said, I've seen tons of stories where it's like the dude is supposedly gay, but you find out that he's been porking the dude's wife, wife for some time and a half. Yeah. This literally don't seem like it, but in the same breath, all the toxic traits and distancing herself from her husband, it, it, it's just, I don't know. I got mixed signals from this one. Our relationship took a hit, hit, but we love each other and we're going to work on it. We set some boundaries and also agree, agree to always make each other our top priority. I have a few more, more months left of this project, we're, but we are going to make, 
make a point to go on a proper date at least once a week and reserve some cuddle time on the weekend. Yes. Thank you to everyone who replied or sent me messages based on my first post. I got uh, some really good advice. I am hopefully, I am hopefully this, I am hopeful this experience will make us be better and make our relationship stronger. So he kept, he put the word hopefully. So I kept re reading it as that. Uh, sorry about that. And that is the end of that story. So uh, let me just let me just put my thoughts in on this. Ah, uh, I'm glad they kind of worked it out. I'm glad they kind of worked it out, but in the same breath, everything about this just seems a little off-putting to me. But, you know what? Hell if I know. It's not my relationship. Not my monkey. Not my circus. I'm glad him and the wifey could work things out. Not every Redditor is a bitter Redditor, here, folks. Not everyone is... Not every person on Reddit tries to always promote divorce. However, in this case, this is the exception. Because I'm so sorry, just that that amount of blatant disrespect was just unfucking re real. You telling me me some your gay best friend is your soul mate? The hell am I married to you for like a whole solid year and a half to three years for for then? The hell? That was like the most disrespectful line out there. There. That's that's the instant. That's like the instant divorce line. She didn't even think about it. Like like put it like this. Put it like this. Chuck had to activate his guy code mode. And literally just be like, you do realize he's probably going to think about divorcing you after you saying that, right? Like, he probably, she probably told him about the conversation and he was like, all right, look, here's what's going to happen. I'm going to move out of here because I don't want to be, be a part of this BS when he, when the fingers get pointed. But most importantly, you going to have to try and fix your marriage. Good luck on that, that part because you didn't hurt that man's feelings the high hell in heaven. That be, but that's crazy. Six fucking months. If you can stay for th three like two and a half to three max, but you got to have your shit in order and be ready, ready to move the hell out in somebody else's place or get your own place. I get it when you get cheated. And trust me, as someone who's been cheated on, I get it. You go through a depression stage, but damn six months. That is, that is plenty of time to recover. That is a decent time to recover, especially if you were staying with your adoptive sister and your, and her husband, AKA your brother-in-law, the hell, the hell man. Uh, but anyway, folks, that's going to be enough of that. That I hope hope you enjoyed today's little episode. Quite the treat I get gave you with two stories for the price of one. But I mean, hey, hey, that's li life. As always, click the like button, sh uh, share, and make sure you subscribe to the host who does the most, Lit Like Ninety Six. And uh, oh yeah, like always, if you're seeing this video on TikTok, follow me on the YouTube, Instagram, so on and so forth. This is the host who does the most, Lit Like 96, signing off. See ya, people.